Hi everybody, Vicky Piers from Inside Liverpool. Um, I thought it would be quite interesting today to have a little browse of Rightmove and see what was available at the moment. Um, it's the 19th of March and um, we get an awful lot of emails from people who have fairly small pots of money to invest. Um, it's probably one of the reasons why they've chosen Liverpool and why they've come up north um, because their pot wouldn't go very far down south. So on average, um, people tend to have a pot of about maybe 50 to 70,000 pound cash. Um, and generally what they're looking to do with that is to stretch that money and make it go as far as, as possible. Um, and there's a couple of ways to do that. So it might be that they use that pot of money on um, just buying some buy to lets that don't need a lot of money spending on them. And um, they can use them as deposits and then they can buy maybe two or even three houses using maybe 15,000 as a deposit. And then they can buy maybe three um, houses with the legals and with the stamp duty and what have you. And um, that's probably most of their pot used up. The other thing they can do is buy something um, that needs a lot of work. And that's one of the strategies that we use. So we buy properties that need work, we refurbish them. And then because we've added value to the property and we've put it into a better state, we then refinance that property. And the idea is that you pull out um, a big chunk of your money that you've spent on the purchase and on the refurb. Now, Liverpool's got to be quite a hot market. It's very buoyant at the moment. Um, for the past two years or so, there's been a lot of influx of money coming from other cities, particularly down south. Um, and because of that, the property prices have been creeping up slowly in some postcodes. So it's not really the case that you can probably pull out all of your money all of the time. Um, you might do really well on one or two properties and be able to do that. But do know that you're probably going to be leaving a little bit of money um, in the deal. But as long as you can get that money out in a sensible time frame through the rent, then I think that's still a really good um, use of your money. And then every couple of years you can recycle that cash and go again. So I'm going to have a little browse through Rightmove because I got an email this morning from a guy who said I've got £50,000 to invest um, I want to buy a property for cash and I want to be able to do it up and um, I'm fine with um, using bridge and finance if I need to to top up my pot and it just took me a couple of minutes to think about what would be the best area for him to invest in and what, what would we be looking to buy and one of the first things I do before um, we even worry about finding a property off market. I always look on right move to see what's happening. So I thought that's what we could do today. So if we just take you over to right move and on your home screen, all we're going to do is just type in Liverpool. Now I know some of you may have, um, you know, gold mine areas, you've got certain postcodes that you're interested in. But most of the time, I think if you're very stuck on a certain area or a certain strategy, you could miss some good opportunities. So anytime I'm searching um, right move, I just type in Liverpool. And then what we're doing is we're looking to buy, so for sale. And then we're gonna put in some filters here. So the area we'll leave, the price range, I'm gonna put as a maximum of 50,000. I'm not interested in how many bedrooms that is. Um, I'm not too bothered about the property type and I'm not bothered about when it was added to the site because it might be a brand new um, listing or it might be an older one. Um, I am quite interested to see what else is sold. So even though things have been marked as STC, sold subject contract, um, deals fall apart for various reasons. So I always like to tick that box anyway to see what's sold recently. And then we can always keep an eye on them in case um, for whatever reason the deal didn't go ahead. And then we're going to find properties. Now, what you'll find here is um, sometimes they will show you things that we're not interested in. So we need to go to the filters and we're just going to put in that we don't want to see shared ownership properties because we can't rent those out. OK. And then that's it. And then we're going to search for done. And then I'm interested in sourcing it by the newest listing. So what's just been listed recently? So let's have a browse. So we can skim up and down quite quickly and see that already it tells you just here we've got 374 results. That's a lot of houses that are less than um, £50,000 in Liverpool. So um, because we want to try and recycle some of that cash if possible, I'm not too interested in these studio flats, I'm not too interested in new builds really because they're already refurbished. What we do want to do is start tracking who from the agents is selling properties in this price range and also what we can buy for the cash. What is the market advertising at this moment? So we've got up here a two bedroom um, terraced house. 
Springbok properties. If anyone knows anything about Springbok, you'll know that they tend to sell properties that are quite cheap. Um, they're usually dealing with vendors who are in certain circumstances that mean that they need to sell quite quickly. So their properties are usually um, quite accurately priced. It probably is um, the case that what they advertise it for, it will sell for that. Now and again, that's not the case. Now and again, they do do something where they put things on a little bit more. Um, and I think that's to do with the vendor's circumstances and how much they own their mortgage. Um, but a lot of the time, the property prices are quite sensible. So that's always a good one to start with. Um, so you can have a look just you know, through some of the pictures and see what condition the house is in. Sometimes they only have the one picture and it's quite difficult, so you can't really see inside. That's quite unhelpful at times, but that's usually because they've only just been listed. Um, and if you check back in in a couple of days, it might be the case that they've got a few more images there, which would be more helpful. And then just on the right hand side, obviously, we can favourite these properties. We can save them as we see anything that we think is useful. So a two bed for 35,000, um, Cheviot Road, price to sell. No one would chain, needs updating throughout. That seems like a really good purchase um, on the face of it. Obviously, we need to see inside the property and how much work needs to be done. But that's one that you might want to save. Studio flats for sale. Very difficult to sell on. The exit strategy is not usually very helpful. Um, it, you're only going to be selling that on to another investor. Um, studios rather than one beds are quite tight um, and they only really command a certain type of tenant. So they're usually students. Um, what you're really buying here is a, you know, a, a guaranteed rental yield. So a lot of these properties, they will sell you and tell you that they're going to um, guarantee your rent for maybe two or three years when you first buy them. Go down again. So we've got one here on Olivia Street in Bootle, so 49,950 added today. Um, there's quite a few streets in Bootle around this area that are two beds that are on the market for around about 50,000. Um, and I know that they are in a far better condition than this one appears to be. They're usually um, tenanted or they're unoccupied and they're in reasonable condition. They probably need a bit of updating but they don't seem to be in as bad a condition as this appears to be on the outside. So I think perhaps this might be a little bit too expensive, but let's have a little browse at some of the pictures. So outside needs a lot of work. Inside looks a little bit better, but we can see over here, obviously there's a lot of damp um, in this corner. Looks quite tired, um, needs some modernization. Looks like um, maybe slightly older people have been living in here. You're going to have to get rid of all of these gas fires really from a safety point of view. I just don't think gas fires in tenanted properties are ever helpful. Um, you've got a lot of issues, particularly these ones with the coals on. Um, you've got a lot of issues and your gas engineer is going to be making good money from you going out to check those quite regularly. Personally, I'd just take them out. Um, this old style cladding, again, this can cause all sorts of problems when you're ripping it out. Um, obviously, you're going to have to replaster all of these walls as well. So you're taking this off um, and causing quite a lot of damage. Up here, this looks like ceiling tiles. Um, ceiling tiles are never a good idea in rented properties. Um, they, are, they can pose a fire hazard. So do check whether you've got things like Artex ceilings or ceiling, um, ceiling tiles. Kitchen obviously needs a huge amount of work. It looks like there's been some kind of leak perhaps over here. Um, really tired, needs a quite a bit of money spent on this. Obviously modernization throughout. Um, really quite basic. This, all this wallpaper hanging off, that suggests that there's some damp perhaps in these areas. And then obviously there's been an issue all around the window here. And the thing that I've been looking at, oh, beautiful. <laughs> the thing I've been looking at straight away is on the page, just a bit further down, on right move, it tells you here the kind of prices the properties are sold for. So let's see. So nearby houses have sold on that road. Um, so your three beds are selling for about 55 and then a three bed there for 77. I imagine that's in a much better condition than this one. And your two beds are selling for about 46 and there's one for 41. So if we just go back to the advert, this is, shows us that this property has been advertised for 49,950. And if you've got the um, property tracker or property B plug in, this little arrow comes up and it helps and it tells you, you know, where the property prices have dropped on the listings. So this one was listed on the 19th, which was today. And um, so 49,950. Personally, I think that's far too much to be paying for that property. Let's go back to our listing. This is interesting. So once we get down to three bed houses in this £50,000 price bracket, that seems a more useful um 
a more useful purchase for you. So if possible, I would always be pushing for a three bed house. Um, we've got a big demand for three bedrooms, houses in Liverpool across most postcodes. Um, we've got a lot of properties that are being converted from three bed houses, single let into um, four beds, multi lets or HMOs. Um, and for that reason, there's less and less three bedroom houses available. The other thing is when people move into a three bedroom house, families, they tend to stay for a long time. So there's not as many properties available to rent on the market in the three bed category. So if you can push to get a three bed, I always would. And um, so we've got a three bed here on Clarendon and then we've got a three bed here on Ennismore. And um, this one tells us it was reduced just as you prior by Priory Estates. Um, Priory Property Services or Priory Estates are based in Anfield, so they primarily deal with L6. Um, and it tells us over here it was reduced from, um, on the 1st of February, it was 53,000. Then it became 49,950 on the 18th um, of March. And then it became, this makes no sense. And then on 25th of um, February it became 45. So this is really quite interesting if you look at this because obviously the property had dropped. It was listed on the 1st at 53. They dropped it immediately to 45 on the 25th. And then on the 18th of March, they've obviously put the price back up a little bit to 49.950. Um, so motivated seller, very possibly. Um, dropping the price to 45,000 could have been a mistake by the agent, could have been perhaps that the vendor allowed it and then they were still getting um, offers below 45,000 and they weren't happy about that. Um, I would be going to view that property and having a really good conversation with the agents to find out who is selling the property and what the reasons are and see what kinds of offers you could get accepted because this is an unusual situation. Um, they usually drop the price and then continue to drop the price. They don't drop the price and then put it back up a little bit. So it might be worth an explore. Let's have a look at the pictures inside. So from the front, it looks like a two bedroom house um, these are quite typical two bed terraces usually. So the fact that it's a three bed is quite interesting um, tells us down here that it's also got two reception rooms. So obviously we said about the gas fires before they need to come out and um, the radiators and the woodwork and things all looks a lovely beigey peach colour perhaps um, need some money spending on it to tidy it up. We can see all the way around here, you've got lots of damp patches on the walls. And as we get further into the house, um, obviously it's really grotty. Needs a fair, um, fair amount of cleaning up. Nothing a good scrub probably wouldn't sort out with some bleach. I mean, the grout doesn't look too healthy. Um, but the bathroom itself is probably quite serviceable. This toilet and, and sink look quite new. Nice round glass panel. Kitchen has got some issues here and this is a boarded up window. That might be for safety reasons or it may well be because the, um, the window is being smashed in. I think this is a really interesting property. If we just go back to the bathroom, this is quite a modern toilet and a modern looking sink, glass panel, and yet the walls are really quite tired and dated. This kitchen, this is a brand new looking sink. Looks like they've spent good money on this and yet there's quite tired old looking cupboards everywhere else. I wonder if somebody has started a refurb and has come up against some kinds of problems, um, money problems or you know issues for, for reasons they can't complete the property. It's sat empty and then they've had to board up the windows um, from a safety point of view. Lovely, lovely purple walls really bright colours all the way throughout, which is really unhelpful when you're living in the property. You don't want these very, very bright colours. Um, personally, we do white throughout, grey carpets, white walls. Um, Landlord's Magnolia, there's not a market for that anymore either. And there's certainly not a market for these really, really bold colours. Um, and then a red in there. We've got lots of holes, dotted rounds. Not sure what some of these are. This looks like some graffiti on the wall and this is all damp. And then there's the um, like the yard area. So here's your single story extension. Single story extension will have a flat roof probably that will need checking. Um, the flat roofs are usually felt. They maybe have a 10 year shelf life. Um, so that will need to be checked that there's no leaks and things coming in here. All of this wall could do with a good clean up. And then it looks like here they've boarded up the front window as well. So I think that's one that's worth exploring. The price, I wouldn't be too concerned about what the price actually says. Obviously, you can do your figures based on 
um, what the market allows. Um, you know, if it's not selling for 49.950, you can put in an offer of whatever you want. And as long as you've got a reason for why you've put in a lower offer and you can explain that to the agents, they're usually quite accommodating. Um, and I would just be saying to them, this is the figures that I think it's going to cost me to do the refurbishment. Um, and that's what we're basing it on. So it might be that you put on in an offer. I think I'd probably start um, around just under the 40,000 mark. Um, given that the property market is quite buoyant in Liverpool, I think if we start the game where we're going really, really, really low, um, there's a good chance that somebody else will put a better offer in more quickly and we'll be able to secure the property quicker. Um, I don't think you're in a position to be able to just sit back and put in low ball offers and wait and wait and wait and hope the agent comes back to you, and um, particularly not for a three bed anyway. I think my offer would be just below the £40,000 mark, so £39,950, um, to avoid stamp duty, but also to um, give me a little couple of grand to play with to be able to do the modernisation of that property. This one really interests me as well, 49,950 on Ennismore Road. Ennismore Road is a much nicer area than Clarendon is up in L6. Um, from a rental point of view, it's very close to an area called Old Swan, um, which has got lots of amenities, lots of um, shops. There's a huge Tesco and an Aldi. Um, there's, you know, doctor surgeries, there's dentists, there's a vets. There's quite a lot of things in that small area. Um, it's like a high street and there's also a really good bus system straight into town probably takes about 20 minutes to get into town on one of the buses along that main um, route going in so this is a really nice location um, particularly for this price bracket the below £50,000 mark again it tells us here that it was listed on the 16th which was only three days ago and from the outside it looks like a much grander house than this one does with just the two windows um, you know, with the bays and everything, we can tell that it's going to be a much bigger house inside. The rooms are going to be larger. So let's look inside. It's listed with Entwistle Green, 49,950. Um, needs a little tidy up outside, but doesn't look too scary at all. Next door, I always think, if we look at the neighbours as well, they look like they're well looked after. So that always fills me with hope. Pictures inside, though. A little bit of a shock. Um, it looks like an old person's lived here for a number of years and it's become very, very dated um, and no work has been done for a long, long time. So I think you would need to get a surveyor to come out and look at this property. And um, the very fact that we've got this wooden panel and tell us this, this is, you know, this is very, very dated, probably from the 70s. You can see some of the heaters on the walls and um, it doesn't look like there's gas central heating. We've got that very old style cooker and um, the gas cooker over there. So there is gas to the property. Um, open plan living, perhaps you'd want to look at this and whether this is actually being supported correctly. So they've opened this up to be a kitchen, dining room, um, but you'd need to check that the steels are in place to make sure that that has been supported correctly. Um, again, these bold colours all the way throughout seem to be quite typical of some of these houses that need work. Shouldn't put you off at all because it's just a pink job, um, but obviously we need to find out structurally and um, damp what kinds of issues um, the property has. Wow, so this looks like a hospital bed. Um, again, you want to be thinking about from a structural point of view, how much work does this property need? It is a terrace, and um, so generally the walls either side are okay, but you do need to check the front of the house, make sure there's no subsidence, make sure um, you know there's no other issues, none of the walls seem to bow in perhaps. Any work that's been done inside has been done correctly, like I said, with the room that's been opened up there. Gas fires to be removed. Um, Ceiling looks okay. You could probably keep some of those nice features, the coving. There's the kitchen area, so not a large space. So I think opening it up was a sensible thing to do, but perhaps this could have been done. Um, make sure it's done correctly. And then door out into the back. So one of the bedrooms looks quite small bedroom, the third bedroom, but probably still very big. Um, it's probably still big enough for a single bed. And then there's one of the other bedrooms and the bathroom. So the boiler's in the bathroom here. Um, it really wouldn't bother me where the boiler was at this stage because this is a complete rip out, a complete back to brick. Um, and all new gas central heating needs to be installed anyway and a new bathroom. So again, quite a tight bathroom, but it's nice that it's got a window. Sometimes the bathrooms are in the middle of the property and they don't have any natural light and natural ventilation. So that's a good thing. Overall, I think that's a sensible purchase. It's going to cost a fair amount um, to do up. And I think this price might be a little bit high for that. 
And as I said before, if you just scroll down, see what else is sold in the local area. So here we go. So our three bedrooms. So we've got one here that's sold for 82,000, which is probably in far better condition. We have a quick look in the link. Yeah. So, you know, not the most modern house in the world, but still much, much nicer um, than the one that we've just viewed. There we go. That looks quite nice. Owner occupier. Small kitchen, compact, but big enough. And then the bedrooms and the bathrooms. So that one sold for 82,000 at the end of 2017. So I think that's probably the kind of price that you're looking for a refinance on. And we've got one here that's sold for 70, 69,500. There you go, nice and tidy, nice laminate floors, not a lot of pictures inside. Um, And that one came in at 69,500 back in 17. That was a good purchase. Three bed for just shy of 70,000. Um, so I think this property that we've just been looking at was going to probably revalue at about 80, 82,000. Um, and if you want to work that backwards, so let's get our calculator out. So if your values are 82,000 divided by four times three, so if you remortgage at 82,000, you're going to pull out 61,500. So you don't really want to be paying 50,000 for this house because then that only leaves you with 11,500 for everything, including legals, stamp duty, um, refurbishment costs, um, and, and you're not going to pull all your money back out. So this is the kind of thing I was saying to you before. Don't necessarily expect to pull all of your money back out. But obviously your offers need to reflect the market and they can't be too low that you're going to lose the property. But I think if you went in with an offer um, starting point at around about 40,000 for that one or just below the 40,000. Um, I don't think it's too ridiculous. But I wouldn't say that I confidently say that you'd be able to secure it for that because it might get um, a higher bid from somebody else. Local builders are very good at um, offering, you know, more than far away investors. Um, local builders can keep the costs down because they're doing the trades, they're doing the work themselves. They've got their own trades in place. Um, far away investors are using build teams, so it's costing more money for the refurbishment. So just bear that in mind. Um, people are going to be putting in offers slightly higher than yours, but that's probably because they can keep the costs down on the refurbishment in comparison to somebody who's living further away and having to manage it from afar. Um, if we keep going down then, so we've got a two bed on um, Chirkdale Street in L4, that one's sold. So know that, as I said before, it's good to see what's STC um, and know what's available. So this is a Purple Bricks property. Looks like it's sold um, quite quickly. It was listed on the 14th of the 3rd and it's only the 19th today. So that's been sold really quite quickly. Um, it may well have gone, you know, the first offer's been accepted straight away. Um, on right move, you've obviously got access to what's been listed in the local auctions. So these kinds of prices, these kinds of properties, we've got guide prices, or it tells you the date of the auctions, then more. This looks like this is probably something cash. Yeah, there we go, something cash. Um, Fenmore's and Sutton Care are good at putting properties on below the £40,000 mark. Um, they're aware that if they put them on low, they're going to be a bit of a bidding war on the day. The auctions have got a little bit crazy in the last um, couple of months or so. People are paying more than they probably need to. And remember, you've also got auction fees on top of those. Um, so the sellers pay an auction fee, but the buyers also pay an auction fee. Um, and it's something like £950 plus VAT um, on, on the properties. Um, it could well be a percentage actually. Um, so double check what the auction fees are on the on the purchases if you're looking at auction. And again, because of the lack of images, that's quite difficult to gauge whether that's a good price or not. One bedroom apartment. I'm not interested in apartments personally, um, as in one-off apartments in a block. And um, we've got a couple of those, and they cause us no end of fuss, partly because they're leasehold, so we've got service charges to pay, ground rents to pay, but also because um, we're not really sure who's going to be living around our tenants. So you buy a property, a flat in a block, you don't know who's going to be living next door or above you. Um, from a noise point of view, that can be problematic. From a um, flooding point of view, that can be problematic. If you've got someone living above you who's got a leak under their bath, for example, they can cause a lot of problems for your tenants. Um, and you can't always get that sorted very easily, um, particularly if the landlords of the property above is, um, is out of the city and you don't know who they are. 
Um, so leasehold, individual units in one big block, I usually discount. Um, three bedroom flat for sale, that seems really, really cheap. £35,000 for a three bedroom flat, 10% gross yield. There's a reason for that. Um, Jason Street, those um, towers, as you can just see here, um, I wonder if there's a picture outside. See, yeah, you can just about see. These are high rise towers. So you can see here, there's about three or four of them next to each other. They're really, really high rise blocks. Um, and we're quite limited on who is prepared to live in those. You're going to get a certain type of tenant. Um, and even at, you know, even if someone's paying you £380 a month or something for one of these, for, um, sorry, 380 even if someone's paying about 38000 for one of these flats, um, because that's what you'll pay with the fees, a 10% yield should be very achievable, but you're probably not going to get much more than that, even at about 38000 So Jason Street and around that area is not usually um, somewhere I would advise people to go. Again, it's a, it's a flat in a block but also because the area is not great and the towers themselves usually have quite a few undesirable tenants because of the type of area that, that it's in. Smithtown Rose already sold, so that was a one bedroom flat for 20,000. Another one that's sold, that looks like a studio flat. And then some more auction purchases, two beds on Bowler Street. Bowler Street and L6, Molyneux. Tudor, Cambria, all those streets around that area are, you know, typical two bed terraces. Easily be able to get about 400 to 450 pounds a month in rent. Um, if you let it to DSS tenants, you can get 104 pounds 60 a week, which works out to 450 pounds a month. Um, and if you're picking these houses up for below 50,000, um, many of them are in the auctions for 40,000, and you do a little bit of refurb. Even if it doesn't value up hugely in comparison to what you've paid, um, you're going to get a good yield back on those. So £450 a month is probably going to be creating um, maybe about a 10% yield on some of those properties. Um, and a two-bed terrace with a yard attached, you're probably going to get tenants that live there for a couple of years at least. Um, they may up, you know, upgrade and go to a bigger property, but a lot of people don't. A lot of them just stay in these two-bed terraces. Um, I don't think they're, they're a bad purchase at all. Two beds on Grantham Street. This one really interests me. I had a look before. It looks really nice inside. It's obviously been refurbished. I wonder what's happened to the person that needs to sell in an auction when they've just done a refurbishment. So Grantham Street, um, two bed terrace. Looks really tidy, clean outside. Guide price of 50000 Look how nice this is inside. So the open plan living, this all looks like it's brand new. New carpets, new laminate, small kitchen, but very serviceable. Nice little bathroom, downstairs bathroom, I guess. I think this will be a shower somewhere here. Good size bedrooms upstairs. So this is like your lounge area, maybe your dining area from your kitchen into your dining room. There's your staircase going upstairs. This is quite typical actually thinking about it. So this is usually your living room, your dining room, then your kitchen over here. Come up the stairs, bathroom will be downstairs. Come up the stairs to two good size doubles. That looks really nice and clean and tidy. Guided to 50, I've got a feeling that might go for a little bit more. Um, if it goes to an outside investor anyway, locals probably know that it's not really worth a lot more. As you can see here, if you go to the sold prices, what's been selling. So a two bed in January of this year sold for just shy of 40,000. And there we go, older person, a little bit less modern, a little bit tired, serviceable, will still rent for 450. And the refurbished properties are probably not going to rent for much more than 450. Really nice high end finish. Maximum you're going to get is 500. I'd be surprised um, if you got 500, though, to be honest. And then the last one that I thought I'd finish on is this one, a little bit further down. Here we go on Whittier Street. So 47,950. List is on the 13th. Hunters, two beds on Whittier Street, L8. So Whittier Street um, is close to a couple of streets that I have been suggesting are not the most desirable areas. Um, it's just off Lodge Lane, and Lodge Lane in itself is not such a bad area. But we've got an influx of immigrants who are um, kind of focused in these small streets that are very close to each other. Um, so if we just go down to the map, I'll just show you where they are. So if we zoom in, 
We've got Greenleaf, Whittier, Wendell, Holmes. Um, these couple of roads, these four roads here, have got a little bit of antisocial behaviour going on. We've got gangs of men um, who seem to be hanging around outside, drinking sometimes, um, quite noisy. And I know a couple of landlords who did really well with some of these houses a long time ago, and now they're struggling to keep tenants. So tenants who should be living in the property for a couple of years because their two bed terraces are moving out within, you know, as soon as the six months is up, they're moving out really quite quickly. So the turnover of tenants is quite high here. Um, the property itself doesn't look awful. You know, it does need to tidy up, but it's not awful. Um, does need a good clean up, good tidy. Come into this little vestibule here, a little bit of damp under the window. Open plan, living room, dining room. There you go, the um, stairs upstairs like before. Small kitchen with a door out to the back. Again, probably really serviceable. Maybe a case of new doors on the cupboard units. Tidy up the floor tiles, give it a paint. Some damp around some of the windows. And then this is a bit dated, take some of these wardrobes out. And the bathroom is quite small, but again, it's nice that there's a, um, a window, so external light, ventilation. So it seems like an all right house, it needs a little bit of work, but a 47,950, and knowing what we know about the area and the turnover tenants, I wouldn't suggest um, you buying something like this, unless you're quite familiar with the area. Um, and as you can see here, so properties have been selling for around about 47, 48, 45, 52 was the most expensive. And then if we go back a little bit further to 2007, we've got an influx of um, properties all coming to the market and selling. Oh, here we go from 2017 to 45, 38, 45, 48, 47. And this one is on for just shy of 50 and it needs some work. So I um, hope some of that was useful. I think it's really important to browse right move as regularly as possible and have a good dig around and um, do some research. There's a lot of people who are investing from afar and feel like they don't know the area very well. Um, and I think spending some time on right move and then you know looking at the market and looking at what's sold nearby gives you a good idea before you even come up to do any viewings. Um, the one thing I did want to point out to you though is that the market changes so rapidly in Liverpool. Um, we don't have a situation where, you know, I could be saying something now and in six months I can guarantee that, that information is factual. Um, for example, like the, the issues that have been having on um, like Greenleaf and Whitty have been going on for a couple of months now. Um, it may well be that it gets sorted quite soon. It might be that they move some of the people out. It might be that different um, tenants move into the area. It could just sort itself out very easily. Um, the selective licensing in Liverpool, that might have an impact on the type of tenants and who is living in that, that small area and who's causing bother. Um, we might have greater police presence, for example, of an evening. It might all just calm down. So all I want to say to you really is, know that any of the information and the research that you do and the information that you gain, it's only really applicable today. So what's hot today isn't likely to be hot tomorrow, according to Warren Buffett. Um, and that's really, really true. The market for HMOs, for example, was um, getting quite saturated for a period of time. And there's still a few pockets in Liverpool that are at saturation point. Um, and there's also a few pockets that are being advertised at way too high prices, crazy, crazy capital uplift. Um, and that's being brought about by investors paying too much, to be perfectly honest, for properties. So this artificial capital uplift has happened and um, I think getting yourself educated on um, the property market is really really crucial. I spend an awful lot of time on right move. I also spend a lot of time networking with um, property professionals from the city. So we've got good friends who are letting agents, got good friends who are estate agents and I'm, um, we run our own networking events and we try and invite as many people as possible to make sure that we're getting a really good understanding of what's going on in the market. Um, so on the back of that, I think what's important if you've got the um, if you've got the money behind you ready to buy a property, I think the other thing that you need to do is get yourself some education around the market. And um, we're running a discovery day on the 29th of March. These discovery days are roughly once every two to three months, um, depending on what my schedule is looking like. The next one's 29th of March and we don't have another one booked in after that yet. Um, there probably will be one later on in the year, but I'm not entirely sure when that will be just yet. So if you do want to learn about Liverpool, this is an absolutely fascinating day. 29th of March, um, full day, 9 till 5. 
and you've got me talking at you, um, listen, listening more to my Scouse accent. Um, we also have some guest speakers that come and then we have time to network in the afternoon. And as you can see there on an image from a previous event, um, the mix of investors is really quite wide. We've got um, a really nice atmosphere in the room all the time. Um, the information in the morning that I provide is all about the different areas in Liverpool where we invest ourselves as landlords and as property investors, but also areas where we've sourced properties for some of our clients. Um, we do do a little bit of sourcing, um, probably deal packaging is a better way to describe it. We do have a mailing list that we can um, have you join if you want to. If you want to join the mailing list, please just let me know. You can comment um, below this video or you can send us a quick email um, or I'll put all my details or you can send a message to our website, which is www.inside-liverpool.co.uk. Um, but I can't stress enough how these events are probably the best event to get to. The information I've just provided to you for the last 20 odd minutes or so was probably quite um, useful to you if you know nothing about Liverpool. Even if you do know a little bit about Liverpool, it's probably a nice opportunity for you to go through and, and just spend some time looking at right move and looking at the pictures like we have. Our investor days are focused on giving you a lot of information in a very short space of time to give you a good grounding for where your particular strategy is going to work. So if you're doing buy to let or HMO or service accommodation, for example, you're going to be want to do it, going to want to be doing those in completely different areas. Um, and we talk to you about what's a sensible price to pay for properties in different areas. We also discuss the tenant demand and what kinds of prices tenants are prepared to pay in different areas. So I think that's quite helpful. Um, and as you can see from the advert there, which is just on Eventbrite, um, because we're quite independent and we're not. Um, we're just giving you education. I'm not trying to sell you any deals at these events. I'm not giving you properties to go off and buy at all. It's just a case of giving you the information so we can be very impartial. So if you've had um, emails from deal sources or deal packages, or you've been sent things um, you know, from estate agents and you just want to get a good gauge of whether this was a sensible price, whether it was a good deal or not, this is the space to find out. So we give you the local knowledge and um, we give you a little bit of confidence as well, I suppose, to help you just give you a little kick up the bum to make sure that you are looking in the right areas and that you're actively taking action all of the time. And um, because, like I said, if you sit around and wait for six to eight months, the market could well have changed quite dramatically. Um, the other thing on the 29th of March this month, I'm really excited about our two guest speakers that we have. In the afternoon session starting at two o'clock, we have John Battle, who is from JDB Surveys. He's been a surveyor for a long time. He's the surveyor that we use um, and I've connected my investors with. And he does surveys on properties and he's really, really down to earth, really nice guy. And he's going to do a talk on um, how to survey a property for yourself. Um, not that he's wanted to talk himself out of any business, but to give you some tips and tricks and things to look out for when you're on viewings. Um, so I think that's massively, massively useful. And then our second guest speaker is Emerald Fisk, who some of you may know from the progressive community. Emerald's an expert in raising JV finance, and she's going to be talking to you about how to be able to raise that JV finance with as little friction as possible um, by kind of aligning your values and, and your investors' values up. And the idea is that obviously you can go again and again and again when you've got a constant flow of money. So um, personally, we borrow money on straight loan agreements. We take money off people and we give them a, a, you know, a set return on their money. And that's how we've been able to build up our portfolio. So knowing how to get access to funds is always crucial. And I'm able to be able to tell you how to do that. After the two guest speakers, we've got networking time um, and that's an opportunity for you to connect with everybody who's in the room. We also invite um, external property investors and property professionals from Liverpool just for the afternoon session. So it's not just you um, mingling with other investors. It's also connecting with people who we know and trust in the community who might be things like solicitors, surveyors. Um, letting agents, estate agents and um, even trades, you've got an opportunity to swap details and, and start to build your, your team, the people that you need here in Liverpool to be helping you to do that work. So if you are um, interested in the event and you want to come along, you can see the link just there at the bottom, http.dot forward slash forward slash 
bit.ly forward slash in live dd please make sure you've got the capitals and the lowercase letters correct in live dd so that's inside liverpool discovery day if you use that link and you use the code the promo code in live dd again same capital same lowercase you'll get 10 pounds off your ticket price um, and that's just because you've been really kind and stayed on today's video and listened to me for um quite some time rabbiting on to you um, as i say the events are absolutely fantastic we always get really good feedback and i would love to connect with some of you um, at the event please go to the link at the bottom use the promo code in live dd to get 10 pounds off and i can't wait to see you on the 29th of march thanks very much speak to you all soon